الحمد لله الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم فمخرج الصبر من الألم وملق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم ذي الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم والعجم الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والتفت الساق بالساق إلى ربك يومئذ المساق فلا صدق ولا صلى ولكن كذب وتولى ثم ذهب إلى أهله يتمطى رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين It's uh, end, end of year holiday season, Christmas break, New Year's break Lots of you are off from school So the masjid is more full than usual And I was given a request Lots of kids are here, can you give a khutbah So we can tell them to pray Because these kids, they're at home And they're not listening to their parents And they're not praying So can you just get them to pray somehow uh, and this khutbah is going to be, I'm going to title this khutbah, khutbah, let me just talk to these kids. And what I want the kids here to do, uh, those of you that are struggling with praying or you don't feel like praying and your mom's nagging you and telling you, come on, come on, get up, pray, pray. You're on vacation, what excuse do you have? Let's go to the masjid. And you're dragging your feet and you're like, come on, get off my case already. This is annoying. And even when you're praying, you're rolling your eyes after you say, Allahu Akbar, you're like, you know, this is what you're doing. Um, your parent, let me talk to the parents for a second. If you forced your children to pray, or you pressured them and nagged them into praying, and they somehow prayed, uh, and they're 13, 14, 15 years old, you might feel better, but they don't. And this religion is actually not about what is happening on the outside. The essence of this religion is what is happening on the inside. So just because you see a behavior that you would like to see, uh, that actually doesn't mean that we have accomplished something good with our children. That's, in a sense, it's good, but it's artificial. It's on the outside. It's like a tree, like a beautiful tree, but it's hollow on the inside. Uh, Allah describes the core of this religion as asluha thabit wa faru'uha fis sama. Right? Its, it's essence the, is like a tree, like the roots are deep and firm, and then its branches go into the sky. When any human being is lazy about praying, and I'm not talking about three or four year olds, and I'm not talking about six year olds. I'm talking about children that are now cognitive, they can ask intelligent questions, they're smart, you, can, you guys can, the dad and the son or the daughter can play the same level video game, they can watch the same TV shows, so they're, they're at an ability where they can comprehend things at a higher level. They have some of the same interests that you have. If you're watching a game on TV, they're watching it with you, right? So they're not, at, in, at some things they're at the same intellectual capacity as you. Of course, they're children, their brains haven't fully developed yet, but they're still lesser. But at some level, they have become intelligent beings. And they're now, you know, demonstrating their ability to make their own choices and to, you know, to, to think for themselves and to ask intelligent questions. So, for those of you young men and women that are sitting in the audience, 
uh, and I'm not going to call you children, I'll call you young men and women, um, let me just pretend that, just pretend that your dad is talking to you or your mom is talking to you in this khutbah. I'm going to pretend I'm talking to my own kid when I'm giving this khutbah. And we're not, I'm not on a member. I'm sitting at home just having a chat with my child. And I, how do I tell them to pray? The first thing I want to start by saying is there was a time, my dear, that I didn't know you and you were not relevant to me. You didn't exist. I didn't care about you. Never thought about you. You were nothing to me. Lam yakun shay'an madhkura. Quran says there was a time in the life of a human being where he was not remembered at all. And including me, I didn't remember you. I didn't know what your name was going to be. I didn't know what you, I didn't love you at all because you were zero to me, nothing to me. But then all of a sudden you came in my life. And even when I found out that your mom is going to give you birth while she was holding you in her belly, and even the mom, I used to wonder what you're going to be like, but I had no idea. I had, I had no clue. Part of me was scared you'd be like me, but I had no idea what you would be like. And even as you were growing up, uh, was you, when you were a baby, I still didn't really know you. I knew that you need to be fed, and sometimes you smell really bad. Other than that, I didn't know much about you. I had to clean you and feed you, but I didn't know much about you. And now that you're, you're growing up, and we can talk and communicate now, and you're going to school, and you know we, we live in the same house, I just want you to know that this relationship wasn't always there. And I also want you to know that this relationship will not always be there. We have very little time together. We don't have a lot of time together. And very soon, you're going to become an adult. You're on the way to becoming an adult. That's not very far away. In fact, when you were a baby till now, feels like a month. Like blink my eyes and you became this, this thing. And before you know it, you're going to be an adult, you're going to go to university, you're going to get a job, you're going to get married. All these things are going to happen, inshallah, if Allah wills. And when that happens, it's not going to be like this. You're not going to come home to me. You're not going to spend time with me. You're going to have your job, your family, your wife, your husband, whatever. That You're going to have your own life. So the time that we do have together is very limited. And even in that time, you've got school, I've got work got groceries to do, I've got... So we have like 20 minutes in a day where we can actually have a conversation. We have very little time actually together. And when you get older, the thing you will remember about me are those few moments we have together. Because we don't have 24 hours together. We just don't. So now, the first thing I want you to know is that I, I barely know you. I barely know. I know we live together, but I barely know you. You know why? Because no human being can truly know another human being. You don't tell me everything you're thinking, and I don't tell you everything that I'm thinking. But there's someone who knew you even when you were nothing to me. And someone who loved you even when nothing in this creation loved you. No one in this creation loved you. And someone who will have a relationship with you even though my relationship with you is going to change. Many of the adults sitting here, even me as a dad, I know my relationship with my dad when I was a kid was different, and my relationship with him in, when I was in college was different, and my relationship with him now is completely different. Even though we're the same people, our relationship has completely changed. But there is someone who has loved you, and has protected you, and has planned for you, and has taken care of you from the beginning, and will always do so. And that's not me. I'm just, an, I'm just an episode in your life. I'm not more than that. It's a beautiful episode that Allah gave you and me together, but it's not a permanent episode. That's the first thing I want you to know. The second thing I want you to know is when I tell you to pray or tell you to do something, you feel like I'm controlling you. I'm bossing you around. I'm telling you what to do. I want you to know something. I can't control you. I can give you advice. I can be strict with you sometimes. That's true. But pretty soon you're going to get old enough where no matter how hard I yell and no matter how much I raise my voice and how frustrated I get, it won't matter because you're going to make your own choices. You're going to say, okay, dad, I'll talk to you later. Okay, I got to go. I got another call. And you're just going to hang up on me and you're going to do your own thing. And in fact, most of the time, I will not have any control over the choices you make. In fact, when you're at school and you're hanging out with your friends and you're talking to your friends, I don't control any of those conversations. 
And if I've already given you an iPad or a phone or whatever, and you're communicating with your friends, I have no control over the kinds of communications you're having. And even if I put parenting control apps on these devices, I still can't control what you're really thinking and what you're really doing. I, I can have some control, but I have very limited control. But there's someone who controlled every cell in your body, who controlled the, 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 the microscopic fluid that you were, that made, inside, made it inside the womb of your mother, that controlled the genetic sequence with which you would be created, the color of your skin, the way your hair looks, your eyes, the way your mind works, how tall and short you were going to... He controlled everything. He actually has control, I don't. I'm reminded of something the Prophet ﷺ told uh, his daughter Fatima radiallahu anha. He said, Ya Fatima tu bint Muhammad, ittaqillah fa inni la amliku laki min Allahi shay'a. Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, be mindful of Allah. I will have no authority with Allah in your case. Which brings me to my next point. Because I don't have control, the truth is, as, as protective as I am of you and I want you to do good, I don't control that and I'm not responsible for it either. Allah made every human being responsible for themselves. No, you know, you see that if, if, if you cut a tra if you become, get a driver's license one day and you cut a traffic light and the cop pulls you over, you're not going to say, uh, can you talk to my dad? That's not, you're going to have to deal with that yourself. When, you're, when your university professor is going to fail you in the class, you're going to say, hold on, let me call my mom. Nope, you're responsible yourself. In the court of law, you're responsible yourself. At the university, you're responsible for yourself. At your job, you're responsible for yourself. For your health, what you put in your body, you're responsible for yourself. For putting yourself in danger and hurting yourself, you're responsible for yourself. The older you're getting, the more freedom you have, the more responsible for yourself you are. You cannot be controlled by anyone and no one else is responsible for you. La taziru waziratun wizra ukhra. Nobody will carry anybody else's burden. I am actually not responsible for you because Allah will... And on judgment day, absolutely, every one of us will come in front of Allah alone. Right now we're together, we live together, we're a family, we hug each other, I love you to death, I think about you all the time. But there's a day coming where we're going to be just as alone as we ever were in our existence. In fact, even if you come running to me at judgment day, it could happen that I'm gonna run away from you. I don't know you, get away from me. I got my own issues right now. Because my relationship with you was these few you know, microseconds compared to my relationship with Allah, which is a much bigger relationship, it's a lot older, and it's going to last a lot longer. Right? And I have to deal with that relationship right now in, on Judgment Day. So this relationship, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَبِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ You know, and all those ayat. A person will run from his mother, his father, his children, his siblings, his spouse. Some of you say running from the spouse, I already do that. Okay, but anyway. So, the, th the next thing I want you to know is that I need to feel that you respect me. I need to feel that you love me. Just like you need to feel like I care about you. When you love someone, you, c you kind of have a some needs from them. You need for me to make sure that the house is taken care of. You need to make sure, you, my responsibility, you need for me that the electricity bills are paid and the heating is working. And you need for me to make sure that you can get to school. You need to make sure, for me to make sure that you're, you have clothes. Those are my responsibilities. And I need to make sure that I feel some respect from you and regard from you and obedience from you. I, I, I get that. But the relationship you have with Allah is different. You have a lot of needs from him. He has no needs from you. He doesn't need you at all, actually. He doesn't need anyone or anything. And let's just talk about you. When you say, why do I need to pray? Why does Allah need me to pray? Allah doesn't need for you to do anything. It's not about him at all. Allah even says, when nothing will remain. Let me just give you an example from the Quran. When nothing will remain in this universe. Let's talk about that for, about the glory of Allah for a second. Recently, I was in uh, Qatar during the uh, World Cup. And the team that wins, so Argentina wins. And they're, it's a glorious event. And they're being celebrated as champions, right? But imagine if they were, if, if and the athlete was being celebrated, 
but there was no crowd, no cameras, no stadium, nothing. A guy lives on his, on his own on an island, and he kicks a goal into a you know, kicks a ball into a goal and says, "Glory!" and nobody's there. That sounds psychotic, doesn't it? To have glory, you need to have an audience. To be acknowledged, you need to have people around, somebody to be acknowledged. To have praise, to have appreciation, you can't have appreciation by yourself. You gotta have someone doing it for you. But Allah says, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ He says, everything will stop existing on this earth. And yet, the face of your Rabb will remain and it will still possess glory. Allah is the only one who is glorious even when there's no one glorifying Him. Only one. Anybody else needs somebody else to do it. So Allah does not need my prayers. Allah doesn't need me to eat halal chicken. Allah doesn't need me to not say bad. He doesn't need any of that from me. So just get that thought out of your head that somehow you're doing anybody a favor. Allah even says, يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا They think they're doing you a favor by accepting Islam. You know? Allah says, لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيَّ إِسْلَامَكُمْ Don't tell me that you're doing me a favor with your Islam. بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّوا عَلَيْكُمْ Allah is the one doing you a favor. Now, the next thing. Why does someone not pray? I'm not talking about you, my dear son or my daughter. I'm not talking about you. But just let's ask the question, why does someone not pray? Well, there could be lots of answers. But Allah has His own answer to that question. It's a pretty scary answer. It's an answer I read in the beginning of this khutbah. He said, فَلَا صَدَّقَ وَلَا صَلَّى وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى He didn't actually accept the truth. And he, nor did he pray. Allah says, he was talking about disbelievers, and he said two things. They didn't accept it, this person doesn't accept the truth, and he doesn't pray. Interesting. So, if you say, if he didn't accept the truth, I would expect him to say, لا صدق ولا آمنا. Right? But he says, لا صدق. What that means is, something is missing in you accepting the truth about Allah. No, 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 the child says. I believe in Allah. I'm Muslim. Yeah, you're Muslim here. You're Muslim in your head. But this truth isn't just for your head. This truth is also for your heart. Something is, you're not feeling how true this is yet. You're not feeling how serious this is yet. You don't realize what it is. Sometimes you know something, but you don't think about it. It's true. You know something, you don't think about it. And so... Because that's missing, that's why it becomes easy for me to miss prayer sometimes and you to miss prayer sometimes. That will happen because our heart becomes a little distracted. And that truth of this deen, the truth of who Allah is, that truth goes in a shelf in the back of our mind and we get distracted and don't think about it. That's what Allah is saying. So, Allah doesn't need you to pray. And even if you prayed because I'm telling you to, what are you going to do? I'm praying for... How are you going to make the intention? I'm praying for rakah because my dad won't get off my case. Allahu Akbar. Allah even told us, the Prophet told us, actions have no value unless they have the right intentions. Inna al-a'malu bin Actions have no... So even if you did this action, but your intention was, I'm annoying, that's your intention, then it, does, it benefits me in no way and it will benefit you in no way. The only one that can benefit from your actual sincere prayer is you. Now, okay, fine. That's the answer to the question, why would someone not pray? Two more things to talk to you about. One of them is, what's the purpose of praying? Like, what's the point? Because you might think the, the purpose of praying is so you don't burn in hell. The purpose of prayer is because if you don't pray, Allah is going to hate you. The purpose of prayer is if you don't pray, you're just going to get punished. Or you won't even be a Muslim anymore. The, and the, the angels will curse you and all this negative stuff. Allah didn't mention those purposes. The, the purpose of prayer is not, not to get away from something negative. The purpose of prayer is to run towards something positive. 
That's the purpose of prayer. Do you know the difference between the student who's studying so they don't fail and the student who's studying because they love the subject? One student is studying because of something positive. The other student is studying because they're trying to escape something negative. An employee who loves their work and an employee who just doesn't want to get fired. They're doing the same exact job. Same exact job. But one of them is so happy, so filled with joy. And one of them is so depressed and so miserable. Why? Because one of them is doing this to escape something negative. And the other one is doing it to go towards something positive. Allah in the Quran, when He told me about the prayer and why we should pray, what's the point of the prayer? He said, well, He told Musa alayhi salam this when He met him. He said, Aqimi salata li dhikri. Is make sure you maintain the prayer so that you can remember me. Maintain the prayer so you can remember me. I told you already, my relationship with you is very limited. But your relationship with Allah started a long time before you even came in this world. And your relationship will continue with Him a long time after you even leave this world. And that relationship is worth remembering because every good thing that comes to you comes from that relationship. Some good things come because I'm your dad. Some good things, but all the good things that come to you only come to you because of that relationship. So if you want all the positive things to stay in your life, you must remember where all of the khayr comes from, all of the ni'mah comes from, all of the rizq comes from, all of the guidance comes from. So Allah says the best way you can remember that is that you remember Allah by prayer. The best way to remember Allah is the prayer. Aqimis salata li dhikri. That's why you should pray. And finally, okay, that's why you should do it. But just because you're doing it for the right reasons, that's not Allah. Allah says that's not enough. There's some benefits too. There's some, 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 some good things will come your way when you truly remember Allah. When you truly remember Allah the way He wants you to. And the way He wants you to is these prayers. If you can do this, Allah says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ And even in this ayah, وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرِ He says, prayer has the benefit of stopping you from falling into things that are indecent. Because indecency is all around you, and I, son, cannot stop you from being exposed to it. Indecency is on your device, indecency is at your school, Indecencies among your friends, indecencies at an eat party when you're going to corner talking to your friends, indecency will be everywhere. And every time you go towards indecency, your heart will get damaged. And Allah says, if you can maintain this prayer, it will prevent you from falling into indecency. And once you fall into indecency, then you become, you know, like if you're if you're breathing in pollution, at first you will cough. Right? But if you stay long enough, you just get used to it. Well, indecency is like that. When you're, when you're taking it long enough, it's not that big of a deal anymore. You don't feel like protecting yourself from it anymore because your, your, your immune system has gotten corrupt. Right? And then you're ready for even more toxic behavior. Even worse things. munkar, Even worse things that, that, you know, that you can do. And this prayer will stop you from going down a negative path in your life. That's why you should pray. Now, these are the reasons you should pray, not because I'm telling you to pray. At the end of this whole journey, the decision is entirely yours. Because I might, I, Allah might take me tomorrow. Allah might take me a year from now. And that relationship you and I have, even if we lived a hundred years, we can't live longer than that. We can't, there's a time where this is gonna end. But that relationship, if you really wanna respect and honor that relationship, pray. That would be my advice to you. So this is just a small reminder to, and I'll, I'll come back to the parents now, a small reminder for myself and for all of us, us parents, that the children we've been given are an amana. They are not something given to us so we can control them. The more we try to control them, the more frustrated we become anyway. And the more, I have seen this, especially in families that wanted to preserve the deen of their children, the more they try to push the religion on their children with control, the more those children rebelled in the strangest ways. 
in the strangest ways. Because the thing that Allah wants to give, the, the opportunity you have with your children is not to make them surrender to your instructions. The opportunity you have with them is to make them think about things that only you can make them think about. Make them love things only you can make them love. Your kid loves basketball because he sees you play basketball. He loves the PlayStation because he sees dad play the PlayStation. You can put a love in your child because of how you are. You can do that. And when you tell your kid, do your homework, do your homework, your kid is not going to be 40 years old and say, I love homework. But your kid could be 40 years old and say, I love basketball. My dad used to play all the time, loved it. What you love gets transferred over. What you instruct gets rejected. That's your reality. Forget your children. That's your own reality. The things, some of the things you love about your dad are the things that were passed down by love. And some of the things you hate about your dad are the things that he tried to shove down your throat. That's the reality of everyone sitting here. Even if you don't say it out loud, because we love our parents and we respect them, but there are some things that we, we didn't take from them. And there are some things we did. And the only things we did were the ones that were tasked, passed down by love. And that's actually the ishara given to us parents in the ayah of Surah Al-Isra. Rabbi rahamhuma kama rabbayani. Sorry. Rabbayani means when you... Uh, tarbiyah is used for growing a plant. You have to take care of the plant. You have to be delicate with it. You have to nurture it. You have to provide it soft soil. You have to remove the weeds from it. You can't yell at the plant. You can't say, get up already, grow already. You have to let it take its time. You have to, you have to see sometimes insects come and bite some of the leaves. And you have to remove the insects. And you cannot just... You, ha you have to sometimes be a little bit harsh with it, but just enough that the, the, the insect is removed and then you have to water it again this is us and our kids and this is why we make that dua for our parents may Allah give our children the guidance that only he can give Allah put istiqama in their hearts that they make right choices in their lives may Allah make them like the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam that he made for all of us his all of his lineage and all of the ummah when he said Rabbi ja'alni muqima salati wa min dhurriyati May, my Rabb, make me someone who established the prayer and from among my children also. And may Allah take, give the parents here, myself and all of you, make us examples of loving Allah and loving the prayer so that our children fall in love with the prayer just because of the way we love the prayer. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مقوتا There's uh, someone taking shahada after the salah so please wait الله أكبر الله أكبر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استقيم يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين فلا صدق ولا صلى 
ولكن كذب وتولى ثم ذهب إلى أهله يتمطى أولى لك فأولى ثم أولى لك فأولى أيحسب الإنسان أن يترك سدى ألم يكن نطفة نطفة من مني يمنى ثم كان علقة فخلق فسوى فجعل منه الزوجين الذكر والأنثى أليس ذلك بقادر على أن يحيي الموتى الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتى على الإنسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا إنا خلقنا الإنسان من نطفة أمشاج نبتليه فجعلناه سميعا بصيرا إنا هديناه السبيل إما شاكرا وإما كفورا الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله كريس Nice to meet you too. Okay, so you got to hold it here so that everybody can hear you, okay? So tell us your name. Chris. Okay, Chris. Um, you have already been given an explanation of the fundamentals of the religion, and alhamdulillah, you've made the decision to accept Islam. What a glorious occasion because so many people are here praying for you, and may Allah reward us also for being witness to this blessed event. I'm going to say some words in Arabic first. You're going to try to repeat them after me as clearly as you can. And we'll go over the English, okay? Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An. An. La ilaha. La ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Excellent. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa. Wa. Rasuluhu. Rasuluhu. I testify. I testify. That there is no one. That there is no one. Worthy of worship. Worthy of worship, except Allah. Except Allah. And I testify. And I testify that Muhammad. That Muhammad is his servant. Is his servant. And his messenger. And his messenger. Congratulations to you, Chris. You are now a Muslim. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Takbir. Mashallah. <laughs> Yakallah. My only advice to you right now would be, take a breath, take this moment in, and take it easy on yourself. I know everybody would want to give you a hug. Go easy on the hugs too. But there's a lot of you and there's one of him. So, <laughs> inshallah. But very happy for you and may Allah protect you and continue to grow you in this journey and not allow you to be overwhelmed. Right now, your biggest enemy is the devil because he hates this kind of thing. This is the biggest tawbah, right? So just pray to Allah for protection and for you to continue to grow in your deen. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Qur'an all the way to the point where they can have a deep 
profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves, and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in. And don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step, so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube, but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family, and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com.